we're going to start off with something straightforward. A couple of lines of text over the top of an image. Basically, a postcard. We've got our original image with some text in the upper right hand corner. To make this happen, first thing I'm going to do is switch over to the original image, which I've already got opened up here. You can see it up at the top of the canvas window, fortjefferson.jpg. So let me click on that tab up there. And here we see the original JPEG picture without the text. To add in our text, at the most basic level, all we have to do is go over to the toolbox and locate the Type tool. The Type tool is a large capital letter T. When you've located it, click and hold down and select Horizontal Type Tool. Once you've selected the Horizontal Type Tool, Note that the cursor changes to the classic iBeam cursor that you're probably used to from programs like Microsoft Word or Pages. The iBeam indicates that you're editing text. Now all you have to do is take the pointer over into the canvas and click where you'd like your text to start. I know that my text is going to go in the upper right hand corner, so I'm going to take that type tool up to the upper right hand corner and click somewhere up there in the upper right. Once you click, note two different things. First, in the spot that you clicked, there's now a vertical blinking bar. That vertical blinking bar is called the text insertion point. That lets you know where the text that you type is going to appear. The other thing to note is over in the layers palette, Photoshop has created a new text layer for you. Whenever you use the text tool to create a new block of text, it, creates, it automatically creates a new text layer. So, now that we have our vertical text insertion point, all we have to do is start typing. Whoops. Okay. And as I type, notice how the text is sort of growing over towards the left. That's because my type is set to right align. How do I know that? Up in the status bar, these three icons here represent the alignment for the selected text. And as you can see, the one on the right or the right alignment is selected. What that means is that the place I clicked to create my text layer becomes the new right edge of this text. If I were to click the left align, the text switches and it grows over towards the right because the place that I clicked becomes the left edge. If I choose center, the place I click becomes the center, and it grows in both directions. Ultimately, I want mine to be right aligned, because that's the way our example was. So I'll click that right alignment. If you think back to our example, that example had two separate lines, Fort Jefferson on the first line, and Dry Tortugas National Park on the second. To make our text look like that, we actually have to go in and add that carriage return, that new line, manually. To do that, take your pointer, down onto the canvas and locate the spot where we'd like the carriage return to go, which is right after the comma. And while you're moving your pointer around, notice how, depending upon where you are on the canvas, the pointer changes. The shape of the pointer is always very important in Photoshop, so you want to watch for these subtle changes. Whenever we're editing text, we want to be sure to have that I-beam cursor. So we want to be sure it looks like a vertical I-beam rather than, for instance, the triangle with the quadrant on it. So we move it around, making sure we've got the I-beam, and click just after the comma, and then hit the return key on the keyboard. And now we've got our two lines of text. I've still got some formatting and other changes to make, but for the time being, I'm satisfied with this text as it is. So I need to tell Photoshop that I'm satisfied with it as it is. Why do I need to do that? Well. Right now, Photoshop is in text editing mode. And when you're in text editing mode, there are a lot of things that you can't do. Notice all that light gray? All those things that you can't do right now? That's because we're in text editing mode. If we tell Photoshop that we're done editing text, all of those things will become available to us again. In order to tell Photoshop that we're done, we need to use the commit button. The commit button is the little check mark up in the status bar. To commit your changes, just click the check mark button. Note that the horizontal line that was under the text a moment ago disappears. And if we check out the menus, hey, look at that. 
a whole bunch of black stuff in the menus, which means most of our functions are available again. Since we are happy with this text as it is, now would be a good time to save our file. So let's go up to the file menu and say save. Ho ho, remember I warned you this was going to happen. We started off with a JPEG image, and then we added some text. Since JPEG images don't know how to deal with the extra text layers, Photoshop is suggesting, perhaps even demanding, that we save this in a different format. In this case, it wants us to save it as a Photoshop document with the PSD extension, Photoshop document. Like I said before, this is a perfectly fine format for right now. Toward the end of the tutorial, we'll talk more about choosing file formats. For right now, just hit save to make sure you don't lose your work. Oh, and we're back to that Maximize Compatibility dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and check the Don't Show Again. Otherwise, it's going to ask me this every single time. And as I said before, I just always leave that checked. So I'm going to go ahead and check Don't Show Again and click OK. And Photoshop works for a moment or two, and it's saved. So to summarize, adding text to an image is as simple as grabbing the horizontal type tool from the toolbox and clicking within the image. Depending upon the alignment setting, which you can find up in the status bar, the point that you clicked will either become the left edge, the right edge, or the center of the new line of text that will be added. When you add text simply by clicking inside the canvas, you have to add new lines manually. Whenever you've added text to an image, when you go to save that file, Photoshop will probably ask you to save it in the Photoshop format. In the next video, we'll take a look at changing the font and other formatting of this text that we just added.